Hello, this is the Bluther Star 7 Grand Piano, that's 6 foot 3 inches long, 190 centimetres. Just come back into stock, we were renting it to someone whose piano we were repolishing. And uh, first of all, you can see the casework is rosewood, uh, Blutner rosewood particularly is one of the very, very best, um, with a nice contrasting grain. We haven't repolished this piano ourselves, it was uh, sold by Harrods in 1960, having been restored, and I think probably it was repolished then. But zeroing in on the keys, we can see that these are really perfect ivory keys, we buffed them up already. Um, so we've done some work on this piano, and a little bit more to do, so I'm going to look at what else needs doing on it. Now, first of all, the casework is in very good condition. Um, we could f fully repolish this. We often do. We love to repolish Blute and the Grands because of the, the really beautiful contrasting rosewood grain that they have. But this one actually looks in very good condition. There's just the odd blemish here and there, but I don't think anything to, to detract. Of course, we can do that, but it's 70 hours work, uh, full French polishing, and uh, we have 30 coats of French polish that we put on. So if, if it's really in need of doing then, and if you'd like the piano repolished, if you're interested in it, we can certainly do that. This is the, the long side of the piano. Um, and really, the colour's integral. It hasn't got any sort of fading so that one part is darker or lighter than the other. Uh, if you want, if you want interested in purchasing this and can't visit us, then please let us know. We could obviously, if you want to do a video call, then we can show you every detail on the piano. But there's a little bit of scratching there. I think that's probably the worst part. Um, so as we get further away, it doesn't not that noticeable. But if you come close, you can certainly see that. So that's obviously um, something to be aware of if you are interested in the purchasing the piano. By the way, if you wanted to try it out for a while, we have rental schemes which allow you to do that. Um, so that's that's obviously a possibility. Or if you would like to just purchase it straight, we might be able to encourage you a bit there financially. There's the underside of the lid, again, beautiful rosewood, although mostly you can see reflection on this video, as that's reflecting the inside of the piano, which is pretty immaculate. Um, as I say, it has been restored and then sold by Harrods in 1960, and really the sample's perfect. The tuning pins are very tight. It's obviously something we mentioned before is really important, and the whole of the piano has been restored. There's the Harrods transfer on, uh, on the fall there, and as we go up, we can see actually they've got their plaque which allows us to date date it um we have a list of harrow's plaques and it's pretty pretty much certain it's 1960 that that was sold by them the frame is um almost 100 percent perfect although there's this little bit of look crazing there um as i say if you can't come in i wanted to show you all the defects there might be uh the felt is perfect there's no no moth or anything like that it's worth checking by the way felt on quite quite often here felt is eaten by moth even if it's been restored um, there's no moth damage whatsoever on this piano and the tuning pins are slightly larger than uh, the originals because it's been restrung but they're very very tight uh, in fact the piano is extremely stable Blutners are renowned for being extremely stable. Anyway, I'm sure if you're a technician, you can back that up. One string's re replaced here. That's when we pitch raise, actually, uh, because they're quite uh, high tension uh, Blutner strings. They, there's a tendency for them to break, though these aren't the original strings. They, as I say, they've been replaced. That's, you can tell that's not typical finishing of Blutner. That's a finishing of the 1960s uh, and today, very similar. So. That tells us it's it's been restrung. There's the uh, that is the original uh, logo on here, I think, and there's a serial number underneath. Uh, touch weight, as we said before, for musicians really important. That's 55 grams, slightly high. We'll be really reducing that, um, though it's not consistent quite yet, quite either. So we'll be making it more consistent. But generally, 55 down to about 50. Actually, there's a, there's a lower one, so you can take, let's take uh, three grams off there and see what happens. Yeah, so it's about 50, 52, so that, that's, that's oh, there's 52 even less. So we'll bring that up to be consistent, 50, possibly 50 there. So we'll bring it down to about 50, between 48 and 52, which is our normal range that we like to aim for. Now, one aspect of regulation which is going to make quite a bit of difference is the dampers are lifting off too early. Uh, if we watch, look at the hammers there as I'm pressing the keys down, uh, the dampers, that's these things here, are lifting off too early, 
so that's making it feel heavier and also it won't be damping so well if they lift off so early uh, now middle C which is this one here actually on the right uh, is lift I've, I've adjusted that to show you how it should be so if we lift off this is B here and that's C and watch the two of them go up so the B is coming up before the C and the C is coming off when the hammer's about halfway or just a bit less than halfway it should be normally between a third and two thirds will be acceptable if you want it lighter then obviously it can be lift off slightly later if it's more than two thirds and it it's a bit too um a bit too late really uh, that's my opinion anyway um if you're a technician you'd like to give your opinion but normally halfway would be normal so it's now the c is now about a third of the way so i might take that a bit later but i want them all to be the same i've done c and c sharp and they come off the same if you watch actually the dampers lifting up with the pedal you'll see that those two are lifting later so there's all the ones around them and the two here there's that that c, c and c sharp are lifting off later but that's that's important in terms of the touch other aspects of touch that are important the set off how how close will the hammer get to the string when you don't play the, when you're not playing it um before it pulls back it's as close as you can with with it still working well so we've already done that now listen to the tone of the piano now that's well there isn't a better tone in my opinion than a blue the grand and that's why we're so fond of doing them let's compare that with the beckstein next to the next to it this is a fully restored beckstein model b Beautiful sound too. Back to the blute now. So it's mellower, it's got a, um, I don't know how to describe sound, uh, let's say deeper sound. Uh, it's carrying extremely well across the soundboard. Extremely consistent pianos, Blutners are. So 1911 is a very good year. Really, Blutners don't vary much from say 1885 to 1920 or so. Consistently wonderful pianos. And the Beckstein. So, wonderful piano too, obviously. Very slightly longer this piano, slightly longer strings. And the Blutner again. A very great richness to that tone and just a superb. Here's a new Foric 179. Blutner again for the last time. Of course, as we said before, the singing area is the important part. the foyer the Beckstein back to the blue now It's important to know that the Blutner has a patent action, as all Blutner Grands do, uh, right up until about 1925, um, when they phased in the normal style of action. So there's a normal style of action. This is a, another, a different Feuerich, and you can see this the set-off button pulls the jack out, and that's on the back of the action on the Blutner Grand. So on the Blutner patent action, the set-off button is at the back, uh, it gives a smoother feel, and uh, certainly Bluton has it, has their have their fans and had a tremendous number of fans. They were probably the alongside Beckstein, the main grand domestic grand piano makers in Europe uh, around about the turn of ninth century, nineteen hundred. Uh, and there we are. You can see the jack pulling out as the set off here. This is a set off button here engages, and so that's adjusted if you want the set off to be adjusted. So that's the that's the jack pulling out. If you can see. There, the jack pulling out as the set off engages. Now, this piano's got almost 100% hammer, not been played a lot since 1960s. We've refaced it slightly and uh, voiced the piano. 
so um, to get it up to its optimum. But really, that's almost 100% hammer, so it's sounding as it, as it was when it was restored. So that's the Bluth and Star 7 Grand Piano at six foot, uh, three inches long, 190 centimeters, made in 1911. Um, we're always trying to stock these pianos. We have restored and sold uh, many, actually, uh, because it's one of the pianos we particularly favor. Uh, it was one of the most popular top range pianos of its day, very expensive in its day. And really, Bluth the construction is second to none. I think if you're a technician, uh, you'd agree with me that the, the, just the, the way it's made, the consistency, they're always very consistent in tone, very, very stable pianos, and uh, have a special action which is unique to Blutner's. It's difficult to describe the Blutner patient, how it feels. Um, if you want to try the piano out, then we have a system of 10 month rental after which all the rental that you paid is taken off the purchase price. So that gives you a long time to sort of decide whether it's the right piano for you. afterwards. There is, the action is different as, uh, as we mentioned so um, obviously if you can't come into the shop and you just want to try the piano out that's understandable. If you are confident to buy straight away then we'll give some financial incentive to do so um, and uh, also we can change the piano within one year if you decide it's not the piano for you. We've always operated that system, rarely taken up on that but um, sometimes people do change the piano for another one. a lot of subtlety and um, just a, a smooth silky sound then Blutner is ideal for that. So um, thank you very much for listening. If you have any inquiries and you're interested in the piano, don't hesitate to email info at robertspianos.com. Ask us more questions and uh, uh, we can even make a dedicated video if you want to, to phone us up on a video call. That would be ideal. listening.